Hi there, Nicholas Campion here with the inaugural edition of the First Formations video series. We're going to jump straight into it, looking today at what exactly is a holding company. Now, in essence, a holding company is an entity set up specifically to deal with assets, investments and management, rather than the provision of goods and services with the view to making a profit from production or sales. Such a company is usually limited by shares, and its main activities will involve the owning of assets in another company or perhaps a group of companies. These assets could be anything from shares to intellectual property and indeed real property. Holding companies may also be responsible for the supervision and management of other companies, in addition to or perhaps instead of simply holding the shares and receiving dividends. Aside from these functions, a holding company will not normally trade or conduct any other business activity. Now, in order to qualify as a holding company, or more specifically as a parent company, the Companies Act requires that the company holds greater than 50% of the voting rights in the subsidiary, or that it be a member of the subsidiary with the ability to appoint and remove a majority of the directors, or to be a member of the subsidiary in accordance with the agreement with the other shareholders to hold the exclusive rights of the voting in said subsidiary. Now, from a tax point of view, what are these holding companies all about? Perhaps one of the biggest attractions of a holding company is the potential for tax savings. Most share disposals and dividend payments to holding companies are actually exempt from tax. If a holding company owns a substantial shareholding of at least 10% of the ordinary shares in a subsidiary for a period of 12 months during a two-year period preceding the disposal, it can dispose of these shares while being exempt from the capital gains. This is known as the substantial shareholder exemption. And it is on the provision that the holding company and the subsidiary company are active businesses for 12 months before and after the disposal. A holding company will also be exempt from VAT taxable supplies if its basic functions are simply to acquire or dispose shares in subsidiaries, receive dividend payments and defend itself and its subsidiaries from takeovers. HMRC does not view these functions as taxable supplies and therefore any holding company that operates with these basic functions alone will not be liable for VAT. Indeed, it is not possible for this type of holding company to voluntarily register for VAT. If, however, the holding company provides or intends to provide taxable supplies to a subsidiary, this could be supervision and management services, it will be permitted to voluntarily register for VAT. And, of course, compulsory VAT registration will then apply when the annual taxable turnover exceeds £85,000. And that is correct for the 2020-2021 tax year. The question therefore arises, can I use the word holding in my company name? And the simple answer is yes, you can. Up until recently, the word holding was what's considered a sensitive word. And this meant there were restrictions in place on its usage. However, these restrictions were lifted in January 2015, and it is now possible for anybody to register a company with the words holding or holdings without the prior permission from company's house. So how exactly do you incorporate a holding company? Well, the good news is the process is virtually identical to setting up any other private limited company by shares. As such, you'll need to register the company with Company's House and ensure that the company adheres to the strict filing requirements and regulations that pertain to all companies in the UK. First Formations offers a range of online packages perfect for registering your company limited by shares. And to do so, we'll just need some information from you, including the company name, registered office, standard industrial classification codes, that's information about the activities of your company, details of the directors, details of the shareholders, details of the shares being issued to the shareholders, information about the people with significant control, the memorandum and articles of association, and finally, any other supporting documentation that may be needed to use your particular company name. Your application form will then be submitted to Companies House electronically, and provided everything is okay, your new company will be registered within three working hours. We'll send you a confirmation email together with the digital copies of your incorporation documents. And if you require hard copy documents, these can be posted to you within 24 hours. Registering your company through First Formations allows you to use our online company manager, which allows you to monitor the progress of your application once it's been submitted to Company House. And after incorporation, this facility can then be used to manage and update your company's details online as well as report certain changes to Companies House. 
That's it for this week. Please like and subscribe to our channel to receive more updates just like this one as part of the First Emotions video series. Till next time.